hello students now the name of our chapter is electrostatic potential and capacitance so first part of the chapter is completed that is about electrostatic potential now we are going to start second part that is about the capacitance a capacitor is a system of two conductors separated by an insulator means as shown in figure you can see there are two conductors and they are separated by some distance and in between this space there is a dielectric medium or there can be a vacuum also means there is a insulation between the two conductors the charge from this conductor cannot flow to this conductor now here these two conductors were equally charged but one is positive and the other is negative the magnitude of charge on both the conductor is same potential of this conductor is v1 and that of second conductor is v2 we already know that whenever there is a charge on a substance it has a potential and if it is a conductor then potential on the entire body of the conductor even inside will be same and so here potential v1 remains same for the entire substance or entire conductor similarly for this conductor also potential v2 remains same whatever the potential is on the surface that will be also inside now if the potential is v1 and v2 on this conductors then we get a potential difference let the potential difference is denoted by v and it is higher potential minus lower so v1 minus v2 so we get the potential difference between these two conductors which actually forms a capacitor so here the system of two conductors forms a capacitor now if i ask you what is the charge of this capacitor then the charge of the capacitor is q if i ask you the question what is the net charge of the capacitor then net charge is plus q and minus q that is equal to zero so net charge of the capacitor is always zero while the charge of the capacitor is always considered that of a positive conductor or you can consider a negative conductor but you have to take a magnitude means negative sign is not considered so now let us move further here i have written that the net charge of this capacitor is zero but the charge on the capacitor is q now about electric field here in figure as here there is a positive charge and here there is a negative charge means in the space between these two conductors there will be an electric field which always directed from positive to negative so electric field exist between the two conductors now it is clear that if the charge is more then the strength of electric field will be also 
more and if the charge is less then electric field will also be less that is electric field is directly proportional to the charge q also we have studied that if on a conductor the charge is more then potential will also be more if the charge is less then the potential will also be less why because we have the formula that potential v is equal to k q by r so for a fixed distance q and v they are directly proportional to each other so here i have written the same thing charge is directly proportional to v or v is directly proportional to charge meaning is same now here if we remove this proportionality sign then there must be some constant related to the system of these two conductors and that constant is nothing but the capacitance of the capacitor now if we we'll make the subject c in this equation then c is equal to q by v so this is the one important formula of capacitor now one more thing important is if i'll consider only one conductor only this conductor and if this conductor is not present then can we consider this conductor as a capacitor then the answer is yes even a single conductor can be considered as a capacitor then question arises in a definition it is written that there must be two conductors and here i am telling that even a one conductor can behave as a capacitor it is because here there is a conductor present at this place this conductor is not present means i can imagine that that this conductor is at somewhere infinity means it is present but it is at infinite distance we can imagine this and so here a single conductor can also be considered as a capacitor but for that we have to imagine the other conductor to be at a far away distance or at infinite distance now students from this formula it is clear that this ratio q by v remains constant and that constant is nothing but the capacitance of the system of two conductors so here also we have considered the system of two conductors if i say i have not deposited any charge on this conductor so if there is no charge on the conductor then there will not be any potential also no charge no potential but if i will increase the charge then potential will also go on increasing in such a way that the ratio q by v remains same again if i will increase this charge then again potential will increase and so the ratio remains constant every time and that is nothing but the capacitance now if i say i have not deposited any charge on this conductor that is i have placed this conductor and no charge is present here then can i call this as a capacitor then the answer is yes it is not necessary that the charge should be there on a conductor without a charge also the system can behave as a capacitor so here i have taken the example of only one conductor 
similarly for the capacitance formed by two conductors is also valid now about unit of a capacitor unit of capacitor is coulomb per volt you can see from the formula that c is equal to q by v unit of key q is coulomb and unit of potential difference v is volt so unit of capacitance is coulomb per volt but on the name of scientist michael farad who has given a contribution in this field of capacitors the unit is given as farad now students this unit farad is a very large unit so in practice we use the units microfarad nanofarad picofarad etc now we know that what is micro micro means it is 10 raised to minus 6 what is n that is nano that is 10 raised to minus 9 and here p is for pico which is nothing but it is 10 raised to minus 12 now students this unit farad is a very large unit so in practice we use the units microfarad nanofarad picofarad etc here this micro nano pico are the sub multiples used along with the actual unit and we all know that micro means 10 raise to minus 6 nano means 10 raise to minus 9 and pico means 10 raise to minus 12 now the components of the circuit are shown by their symbol like resistor in a circuit is shown by this symbol this you have studied in 10 standard that this is for the resistor R similarly when the capacitor is connected in a circuit the symbol used is this if this symbol is there then the fixed capacitor is used means its value is fixed that value cannot be changed but if this type of symbol is there then it is a variable capacitor means the value of this capacitor can be changed by using some regulator dielectric strength now any dielectric means it is a non conducting material its strength means the maximum electric field that a dielectric medium can withstand without breakdown means suppose if I say there is a spherical capacitor and if now I am putting the charge on this sphere so what happens the charge goes on depositing now if i go on depositing the excess charge then what will happen after some time the saturation limit comes and now no excess charge can be deposited on this sphere because now there is no capacity for this sphere to store any excess charge and due to that what happens if i'll go on depositing excess charge the air around this sphere the air particle suppose there is air as a medium then this air gets ionized and when the air gets ionized these charges which are depositing goes on 
leaking means leakage process takes place and so whatever charge are deposited on the sphere that charge will go on leaking so that strength is called the dielectric strength so for air as a medium the dielectric strength is this much 3 into 10 raised to 6 volt per meter and so if excess of this happens then there is a leakage of charge in the air so for different dielectric material this dielectric strength will be different here i have written that the breakdown limit exceeds then there will be significant leakage of the charge so this is the maximum limit after that the breakdown will start students i have also discussed this thing that even a single conductor can be used as a capacitor by assuming that the other conductor is at infinity this we have discussed earlier now if we consider a metallic sphere of radius r then its value of capacitance c is given by 4 pi epsilon naught r here this 4 pi epsilon it is constant so we can say that for any sphere made up of any conducting material its capacitance is directly proportional to r means if the radius is more then the capacitance will be also more if radius is less then capacitance will also be less this formula is not given in your textbook but sometimes in mcq this can be used now next is about a parallel plate capacitor students we know that that a capacitor is made up of two conductors whatever the size or shape of the conductor no matter but now onwards we will restrict our studies based on the parallel plate capacitor so here you can see from the figure there are two plates 1 and 2 I had given the number here these plates are made up of conductors and they are separated by some distance now if these plates gets charged one is positive and the other is equally negative then what will happen there will be electric field between the two plates of a parallel plate conductors now area of these plates which are used to construct capacitor is a distance between the plates is kept d and now we are going to find an equation or a formula for this parallel plate capacitor now students between these two plates there is nothing means no medium is there means what will be there there is a vacuum so at present nothing is introduced between these two plates so we can say there is a vacuum between the two plates and we know that the permittivity of free space or a vacuum is denoted by epsilon naught now the charge on the plate is q suppose the plates are charged now and so if there is a charge plus q 
on this positive plate then there will be a negative charge on this other plate and so what is the charge on the capacitor so we can say that the charge on the capacitor is q so q is the charge and surface charge density can be given as total charge upon total area this we have studied in chapter 1 so we got the surface charge density also now if we'll consider the distance between the plates to be very much small compared to the area in that case what will happen the electric field between the plates will be uniform means the plates are kept quite close to each other otherwise what will happen the electric field will not be uniform between the plates if the plates their areas are small and the distance is large in that case the electric field between the plates will not be uniform now if sigma is the density of the charge then due to one plate on which the surface charge density is sigma the electric field is given by this formula electric field due to a uniformly charged surface this also we have studied in chapter number one so here i had given this equation as number one and this equation as number two so that we can use it later on now students remember the electric field is always between the plates outside the plate that is if i select this point or this point or this point or this point then there will not be any electric field other than the center part that is this part so the electric field on these regions region 1 and 2 will be 0 it is because if we'll select any point in that regions what happens the electric field due to first plate and the electric field due to second plate will result in zero now students you can see the figure and you can answer this electric field due to that first plate on which the charge is is positive is sigma upon twice of epsilon naught from that equation number two on second plate the charge is negative so its electric field will be minus sigma upon twice of epsilon naught and so the result will be zero in another in another way we can say that both these electric fields will be in opposite direction i will show you by the figure if i will select any point here then due to this first plate that is plate one the electric field will be in this direction at this point and if i will consider this plate then due to this plate the electric field at this point will be towards the plate and so both the electric field will cancel out similarly if we will select any point here then also at this point the electric field will be due to both this plate due to this plate also and due to this plate also but due to this second plate here the electric will be towards the plate because the charges are negative and at this point the electric field due to first plate will be in this direction because this plate is positively charged so electric field will be directed away and again both this electric field will cancel each other even at this point similarly for any other point 
also but you can see that if i will select any point between the two plates then electric field due to this first plate that is on which the negative charges are there that will be in this direction and at the same point due to this second plate the electric field will be in the same direction because electric field will emerge from here and it will move in this direction for negative also it will be in this direction coming towards the plate this is moving away from the plate so the electric field between the plates is in same direction and so they will add up and when they add what happens we get the total electric field e is equal to e1 plus e2 and as these two are in same direction between the plates so resultant electric field will be sigma upon epsilon naught you can take the lcm and add these two you will get this result so let us give this equation number 3 now using equation number 1 in 3 i will show you equation number 1 equation number 1 is this sigma is equal to q by a we are going to use this in equation number 3 if we we'll use this sigma is equal to q by a then we will get e is equal to q upon sigma a so let us give this equation number 4 now potential difference we have this formula v is equal to ed where e is the electric field between the plates and this d is the distance between the two plates and so there will be a potential difference between the two plates of a capacitor and that potential difference is v is equal to e d now using this 4 and 5 we have to use the equation number 4 in this equation number 5 so in place of this electric field e we will put q upon epsilon naught a so our next step will be this now what is the formula of capacitor so we obtain that c is equal to q by v and hence if we will use this equation in this then we will get finally c is equal to e naught a by d what we are using from this equation we are using this v we are using the value of v and putting here here at this place and then after simplification we will get this final formula of a parallel plate capacitor so by observing this formula it is clear that the capacitance of a capacitor is dependent on the area of the plate if the area is more the capacitance will also be more because it is directly proportional to a it is inversely proportional to distance between them means if we increase the distance then capacitance will decrease and if we increase if we decrease the distance then capacitance will increase because this c and d are inversely proportional to each other and what about this epsilon naught it is nothing but it is the permittivity of the medium we have taken here vacuum 
so its permittivity will be epsilon naught now about this additional example suppose we want to convert a capacitor of 1 farad for that we will take two metallic plates and we will put that metallic plates parallel to each other and keep some distance between the plates let the distance between between the plates kept is 1 mm so here we have two values c and d suppose the medium between the two plates is nothing suppose air is there or vacuum is there so for air or vacuum the permittivity is epsilon naught now what should be the area of this plate if these things are given to construct a parallel plate capacitor so here we need to find the area we have the formula c is equal to e naught a by d so here we need to find the area so we will make the subject a in this formula so we will get c is a is equal to c d upon epsilon naught value of c is given 1 farad value of d is 1 mm 1 mm means 10 raised to minus 3 meter so we will convert in si system and epsilon that is permittivity of free space that is 8.85 into 10 days to minus 12 now if we'll calculate this then we'll get the answer 1.33 into 10 days to 8 and if we'll take this as round of figure then we can consider this value as 1 and so only 10 days to 8 will remain so i'll consider the area of the plate as approximately 10 raised to 8 meter now if the area is 10 raised to 8 meter and if we have taken the plates to be square plates then both it its length and breadth will be same so what will be area area is l into l that is l square now what is area here it is 10 raised to 8 meter so we can find l so l is equal to root of a and root of a means it is 10 raised to 4 this is value of a and its root will be this so students you can imagine that the length came out to be 10 raised to 4 meter means it is 10 kilometer means if i want to make the capacitor of only 1 farad then i need the square plate whose length is 10 kilometer and so we know that this is practically not possible and hence we have discussed earlier that for the capacitor smaller units are taken because one farad is a very large unit and that's why we use the sub multiples like nano pico micro etc now our next topic is 2.13 effect of a dielectric on capacitance before i explain you this topic i'll explain you one more thing suppose if i have two charged particles one positive and other negative we know that if there are two charged particles separated by some distance then the force will act between the two charge particles 
this is given by coulomb's law we have studied this in chapter number 1 also there is an electric field between the two charge particles and it is directed from positive to negative so there is an electric field also so suppose at present there is no medium between these two charge particles and the force acting is f and the electric field is e now what will happen if i put some medium between these two charge particles some non conducting means some dielectric material is kept between these two charge particles then what happens the force will reduce even the electric field will reduce because of this dielectric material if this material is not present then the force and electric field both are maximum now here you can see that for this parallel plate capacitor in first figure no medium is kept between the two plates means there is a vacuum on first plate the charge plus q is deposited and so there will be definitely a minus q charge on the other plate distance between the two plates is taken as small d and as there is no medium between the two plates the potential difference between the plates is taken as v not electric field between the two plates is taken as e not and for a vacuum the permittivity is epsilon not so this is the condition when there is no medium between the two plates now second condition some dielectric medium is kept between the two plates of a capacitor so in that case now potential difference will change between the plates why because the electric field changed and we know that if there is some medium then the permittivity will be of that medium denoted by epsilon not when the dielectric medium is introduced between the two plates of a capacitor the charge of the plate is not going to change that will remain same distance is kept same that is constant so these three things changes v electric field e and permittivity epsilon not also earlier the capacitance was c not when there is nothing between the two plates now as a dielectric medium is introduced the new capacitance becomes c now what will happen to this new capacitance will it increase by introducing the dielectric medium or it will decrease so let us see what will happen we know that the formula for the capacitance for a parallel plate capacitor is given by c is equal to e not a by d so for first figure when there is nothing between the two plates then at that time the capacitance is taken c not and that is equal to e not a by d where a is the area of the plates now suppose the dielectric medium is introduced and so new capacitance c is given by epsilon a by d which thing changed 
only epsilon why because now between the two plates there is a dielectric medium earlier it was nothing means vacuum area and the distance remains same so this is the new formula for the capacitance when the dielectric is introduced now if we will take the ratio of equation 2 and equation 1 that means this equation upon this equation we will get c upon c naught is equal to epsilon upon epsilon naught why it is so it is because when we take the ratio of this two that is this upon this what will happen a and d here also a and d here also they will cancel out and so only remain is epsilon and epsilon naught so c upon c naught is epsilon upon epsilon naught and we have studied in first chapter what is epsilon upon epsilon naught it is capital k and this capital k is nothing but the constant called the dielectric constant for any substance if the substances are different then the value of k is also different suppose if i take water as a dielectric medium then for that k will be different if i will take h2 then for that dielectric medium the k will be different so for different materials the value of k will be different but always this value of k is greater than 1 for vacuum or air the value of k is equal to 1 but for other medium k will be always greater than 1 so if the value of k is greater than 1 and if i'll make the subject c then i can get c is equal to k into c naught means by the introduction of this dielectric medium between the two plates the new capacitance c is obtained to be k into c naught and as the value of k is greater than 1 the new capacitance will also increase than the earlier so remember students when the dielectric medium is kept between the two plates capacitance increases we have seen that the electric field and the force decreases when some dielectric is placed between the two charges but here for the capacitor the thing is reverse means capacitance increases with dielectric now example number 2.8 students whenever you sit to watch this lecture you should have your textbook a calculator a rough notebook and a pen with you so that you can do some mathematical steps while watching the video now here you can see that in figure there are two plates of a capacitor and a dielectric medium is introduced this dielectric medium is having a thickness of about three fourth of d what is d d is distance between the two plates of a capacitor and 
this dielectric is having some less thickness than that thickness of a capacitor that is D. The dielectric material which is introduced between the plates is having a dielectric constant K. Now before the introduction of this dielectric material between the plates the capacitance is taken as C0 and C0 is equal to Q0 upon V0 because we have the formula for the capacitor as C is equal to Q by V but here the initial condition is there when there is nothing between the two plates and that's why it is taken as C0 and so initial charge Q0 and initial potential difference V0 now what is V V is equal to ED so we have written this also that potential difference is electric field into distance here again this E0 is the electric field when no dielectric is present we have given these two equations number 1 and 2 now after the introduction of the dielectric what happens the new capacitance will be C because we have studied earlier that when the dielectric is placed between the two plates the capacitance of a capacitor changes and so the new capacitance C is equal to Q0 by V now the question arises the capacitance changes even the potential difference between the two plates changes so here the changed potential difference is taken as V changed capacitance is taken as C but why this charge is same as earlier it is because if you will put the dielectric between the two plates then also charge is not going to change because charge they are deposited on the plates and they are not getting disturbed by this process and so C is equal to Q0 by new potential V now this new potential V is nothing but the potential difference between the free space as well as the space occupied by the dielectric now students this D is given in the statement even this 3 by 4 D which is thickness of the slab that is also given but here I have taken the free space as D1 and this thickness of the slab as D2 so I have written this D2 is nothing but it is 3 by 4 into D so this is the thickness of the slab and when it is placed between the two plates some space remained empty and for that the potential is V1 for free space and for dielectric the potential is V2 now if D2 is 3 by 4 into D then what will be D1 so we can see that this D1 is nothing but D that is this minus D2 which is this so definitely you can get this as 1 by 4 into D so now we will use this now the potential resultant potential between the two plates after introducing dielectric is potential of free space plus potential of dielectric for free space 
v is equal to e naught d1 because we know that we have the formula v is equal to e d but as it is a free space v1 is equal to e naught and distance is d1 similarly for v2 that is the space occupied by dielectric the electric field in the dielectric is taken as e and the thickness is d2 now using that value of d1 and d2 d1 is d by 4 and d2 is 3d by 4 that i have explained earlier now in these two terms what is common e naught d and 4 here also e naught d and 4 here so that is taken out common so in first term what remain nothing nothing means one is remained when it is taken out and in second term 3 is remained as well as k is remained so it is 3 by k next step taking lcm of this term which is in the bracket you will get this as k plus 3 by k and what is e naught d e naught d is nothing but it is v naught where it is so it is in equation number 2 so we have placed this v naught from equation number 2 next step using this equation that is 4 in equation number 3 see equation number 3 is this c is equal to q naught upon v that is capacitance after introducing dielectric so this v we are using from equation number 4 that is this so by putting that value of v here and then simplifying we will get this term and finally what is q naught upon v naught so in first equation that is equal to c naught and so finally we will get this result that is nothing but the capacitance when the dielectric is introduced between the two plates of a capacitor but the thickness is less than the thickness of the capacitor there is also a second method but we will not see this second method at present because this second method is related to the topics which are going to study in next lectures